In order to see the eclipse without burning your eyes, you need one of these glasses. Here's what it looks like. Aside from plows shoveling snow into piles even taller than me, no one is here on the streets of downtown Portland. Police say about 35,000 people came to Fenway Park to catch the Red Sox opening game. There's not nearly as much police presence here on the day after the marathon, but what you can see are construction workers actively dismantling the rafters that mark the marathon's finish line. A resolution to change the name of Faneuil Hall was passed by city councilors at a meeting on October 25th. As you can see behind me, there are people smiling, dancing, and throwing around colorful powder. Some Boston University students discuss why they don't know or don't care about Super Tuesday. BNN correspondent Aditya Iyer spoke with residents who have mixed reactions. A resolution to change the name of Faneuil Hall was passed by city councilors at a meeting on October 25th, with three city councilors voting against the resolution. The reason for why the name change is happening? The history behind the man that Faneuil Hall is named after. We began to focus uh, particularly on uh, a place called Faneuil Hall in the city of Boston because uh, Peter Faneuil was a slave owner and a slave trafficker. Activist Kevin Peterson has fought to rename Faneuil Hall since the Black Lives Matter movement in 2020. Policy for Progress says in 2021, more than half of Boston residents support changing the name of Faneuil Hall. But not everyone agrees. I know he owned slaves, but almost everybody did back then. This place used to get, um, you know, 14, 15 million visitors a year this part and they all know it by the name Faneuil Hall. Some believe just because it's always been called Faneuil Hall we shouldn't keep honoring Peter Faneuil. As a as a person who can connect his uh, uh, family legacy to slavery the, the repair and the reconciliation that needs to uh, follow uh, in the wake of addressing issues of race uh, in 2023 is uh, important. So Peter Faneuil's name on that building is an insult to, to me personally. Some of the proposed names for Faneuil Hall include Freedom Hall, Liberty Hall, and Crispus Attucks Hall. But the name itself will be finalized after community discussions. This is Aditya Iyer signing off for BNN. Last week, a Hindu religious celebration brought joy in Roslindale. BNN correspondent Aditya Iyer joined festivities and spoke with some of the people who were there. I'm here in Adams Park in Roslindale where over 4,000 people registered to celebrate Holi, the Hindu festival of colors signifying the beginning of spring. As you can see behind me, there are people smiling, dancing, and throwing around colorful powder. Everyone's friendly um, celebrating Holi. Um, they're throwing colors at each other, There's nobody's getting upset. It's just a, a good time to, to be had by everyone. John Paul Sidner, a professor of religion at Emmanuel College, talks about the history of Holi. It started out as a harvest festival. Also, it started out as a fun time when people left their houses after the, the winter or the rainy season, and they just wanted to have a party together and be playful again. And I think that combination of the harvest festival plus this day of play to celebrate getting out of their homes became holy. J.J. Shishapal, a participant who grew up in India, talks about how this event differed from celebrations in India. What I see is a melting pot right here. I saw people from different countries, religions and colors. When I say that, I, I, I literally mean skin color. <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, it's beautiful to yeah. see this. It, it just looks like a garland of flowers from different variety, you know. <laughs> Both the Boston University Graduate Workers Union and the Residence Life Union are both on strike during the 128th Boston Marathon. We decided to strike for Marathon Monday because it's a really public facing day um, and it's a day that the absence of our labor is really felt um, because there's a lot of students getting locked out because they're, they're partying. Um, so yeah, that's why, we, that's why we chose Marathon Monday. Graduate workers are also picketing to show support for the Res Life strike. So that's why we're out here today. Like this is, we've got a, a huge amount of community supporters out here uh, coming to town for the marathon and are trying to trying to spread the word. With workers striking and, according to police, a citywide increase in security since the 2013 marathon bombing, Deputy Chief of the Boston University Police Department Robert Malloy says the BUPD are keeping the same level of security they always have. Now, when you get closer to the to the finish line, how they have it more sealed off and 
no backpacks and that type of thing. So there's been a, a change perhaps in the way they do that. But as far as here with the BU police along this area where we work, we're pretty, uh, we're, we keep things kind of the same. There's not nearly as much police presence here on the day after the marathon. But what you can see are construction workers actively dismantling the rafters that mark the marathon's finish line. Reporting from Copley Square, this is Dithya Iyer signing off for BUTV.